Hi, I am Leslie. I'm the co-founder and midwife at My Expert Midwife. And alongside me is our consultant midwife. Hi, I'm Karen. I work at My Expert Midwife as well. Now, you may remember us from One Born Every Minute, quite a while ago. Uh, what we wanted to do was put together some videos of all the questions that we get asked around pregnancy, breastfeeding, looking after your baby. We felt it was really important, so here we go. So uh, today's video is all about how do I know whether or not my baby's getting enough milk? And it's one of those questions we always get asked, so it's our first one. So the first milk that you'll produce is called colostrum, and you'll actually be producing that all the way through your pregnancy. And it's actually changing through your pregnancy so that it's got the nutrients that are needed for your baby depending on when it was born. So if your baby was born really early at 24, 25, 26 weeks, the actual makeup of that colostrum is different than if you were at full term. Now when your baby's born, that's the first milk. If they go on to breastfeed, that's the first milk that they're getting. It's really, really high in carbohydrate and protein but very low in fat and it's packed with lots and lots of antibodies and antibodies are the thing that your body produces in response to a virus, bacteria, that sort of thing and that's really important because your baby doesn't have these antibodies really. They've got a few but you're able to give them antibodies for all of the diseases, all these viruses, colds, that sort of thing, flu that you've had, chicken pox all these sorts of things, you're able to pass that through in that colostrum to your baby so that they are then able to start to develop that as well, that immunity to these, these things. Now, colostrum is actually, it's a really thin, watery substance. And there's not much of it either, is there, no. Leslie? So you might not get very much out at all. Um, just a little bit, that's, for example, one mil. Per... And that can sometimes really worry women because they assume that they're not making enough and you've already then run into that cycle of worrying that you're not producing enough. When actually, if your baby was going on to feed, they would take exactly the same amount, but you would just never ever know that that's all it was. Once you get to about day three, um, after your baby's born, um, you'll start to feel your milk come in and you'll probably really know about this because you your breasts will become really quite solid and hard, um, a little bit sore maybe, um, and you might visibly see the milk coming out as your baby is feeding. So that will probably give you quite a bit of reassurance to think that you know you can actually see milk. Um, but remember that your baby's tummy is really only the size of a cherry tomato at this point. So when you think about having to fill it, it's not going to take very much at all. When you move on to about a week after, your baby's tummy's grown a little bit more. It's grown to the size of a small plum, like that. Okay. Um, and it's all supply and demand as well. So if your baby's feeding really regularly, maybe every sort of two hours for maybe 15, 20 minutes, what he's doing is he's putting in that order for the next feed. So the more he feeds, the more milk you will produce. The less he feeds, the less milk you produce. And you can see that by the time they get to a month, it's the size of an egg, their tummy. And that's really dependent on making sure that you're feeding frequently. And I think that's where a lot of the problems stem from, is in those early days, not encouraging baby to breast as often as possible so that the hormones aren't triggering to actually yeah. increase that milk supply and make the milk that your baby needs. And it doesn't matter um, if your baby doesn't actually latch and attach to the breast. The importance is a skin to skin because it's hormones now that are in play. So load the skin to skin with your baby. I won't do it now, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what that does is it stimulates a hormone from your pituitary gland and that's called prolactin. And what prolactin does is in the little alveoli, the little sacs in the breast that contain the milk, it helps them to produce the milk. So all the time that your baby is skin to skin, whether they're suckling or not, it'll be sending signals up to your brain to make milk. And then as you make all of this milk, um, then um, once baby goes on and starts to feed off the breast, 
then the oxytocin comes into play and it releases that milk to your baby. So hormones are really important, lots of skin to skin with your baby and that's good for bonding as well. So another good sign that your baby's feeding well is that they're passing lots of urine, so lots of wet nappies. Um, you'll be able to feel the wet nappies because they'll be heavy. Um, sometimes you can't always see the urine in like um, really good nappies because they're really absorbent. Um, but you'll feel heavier and some of them will have a little line up the front that will change colour. So just be aware of these lines because they'll change colour with the tiniest amount of urine. And what you don't want to do when your midwife's asking you how many wet nappies has your baby had and you're saying, oh well, you know, he's had six or eight today, that actually it's just the tiniest bit of dampness because that can sometimes be a sign that your baby might not be getting enough milk because they're not in the breast properly. But, you know, as far as your midwife's concerned, there's loads and loads of wet nappies. So if you go by weight rather than that sign of the blue. So your baby will feed as often as he or she wants or needs to feed. Now, sometimes if you've got maybe a baby that for some reason has got low blood sugars, or is extremely small or premature, they may not actually feed as often as they need to. They might be too tired to feed. So we're really only talking about really well babies here. Nice, healthy term babies. They should really want to feed straight away. Within the first hour is really beneficial if we can get babies to the breast, even if they don't physically feed, if we can just get them to the breast and get these hormones working, then it just helps with the subsequent feeds. If you can, encourage your baby to the breast, even if it's sort of every sort of three hours, and that just helps to kickstart everything. Now, some babies will poster feed, so they will maybe feed every hour for about maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then not feed for another four or five hours. So don't worry too much if they're not feeding consistently at regular times. Look more for the amount of feeds that they have within 24 hours. So you're looking in the sort of first week for about maybe 10 to 12 feeds and the feeds can last anything between five minutes and sort of 30, 35 minutes. If you're consistently having feeds that are lasting sort of 45 minutes, you need to contact your midwife or your breastfeeding support worker because it's likely that you've just got a bit of a problem with the attachment and what your baby's doing is they're working extremely hard with a poor attachment to get that milk. So they end up with the watery start of the milk, so they're not getting the fat stores there. They're using a lot of energy to get that milk. So these are the babies that feed really frequently for a long time, but don't really put on weight. They pass a lot of wind and they tend to pass wet nappies, but not that many dirty nappies. Now, when you've got a baby that's feeding really well, where they're getting really good quality milk, what you'll find is they will maybe feed for 15, 20 minutes, the odds may be five minutes feed, but on the whole, the average 15 to 20 minutes, and it shouldn't be painful. You'll feel the suction, uh, but you shouldn't actually have pain in your nipple, and you will feel that milk almost being dragged from your, from your breast. And your baby, um, I'll have changing nappies as well so if you watch out for the first nappy which is this which is meconium and that's really difficult to get rid of isn't it yeah isn't it's it, a light you know, tar takes but it's quite black a bit of work. and it's sticky what you'll then find is as the breast milk starts to come through the baby's poo will change into more of a brownie colour. And you usually start to see that day three, day four, day five. So depending on when your milk comes in, so if it's day three, you'll probably start to see that on day four. If you've maybe um, had quite a long labour and you're, maybe your milk's taken a few days longer to come in, you wouldn't expect to see that change quite so soon. And then a good sort of three or four days after your milk's come in, you start to see the lovely, we call it chicken karma, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, obviously this isn't real poo. It's very watery though, isn't it? And it just soaks yeah. straight in. That's it. And that's a, just a really good sign that you know that your baby is feeding well and everything's going through. Um, and that's your basically the end product of your breast milk in there. 
and it's gone right through the bowels and cleared all that meconium away. And you're wanting to look for around about, you know, two to three poos a day, two really um, being the, the, the minimum, but they only need to be the size of about a pound coin or a two pound coin. So it's not a massive amount of poo because there's very, very little wastage with breast milk. So we've got loads of these videos planned. We can talk about anything you want regarding pregnancy, breastfeeding, looking after a newborn, helping yourself recover, anything at all. So just pop them down in the comments, anything that you want to talk about. And you can also subscribe as well. And if you really love it, click on that like button.